Good night. Okay, we are not complete right now, but we are going to begin because you know that uh, we just have an hour to complete all the information that we have. And in this case, we are uh, going to talk about uh, the um, past tenses. So in this case, we are going to uh, begin like in the previous classes, like that we have on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Um, in which we were talking about the tenses, the four different tenses that we have in a present time. And in this case, we are going to talk about the different tenses or the, um, we can say it is not like categories, but we are going to divide it into these ones. So we are going to talk about the four different tenses or the four different uh, groups that we have in the past tense. Vamos a hablar de lo que es el pasado, así como lo hicimos con el presente, lo vamos a desglosar de eh, cuatro maneras diferentes. We are going to talk about two parts of this topic eh, today, and we are going to use tomorrow to talk about the other two. So we are going to end with that topic tomorrow. Um, remember that this one is one of um, almost the last day in which we are going to complete the uh, the course. So tomorrow is the last day. I think that you have read the message that we have on the group in which said that you need to complete all your activities on the platform. I know that some of you had end that activities on time, uh, but I don't know if the others uh, have completed all the information in these days. So if you have problems or you didn't uh, complete your actions in these days, please do it. You know that uh, we are almost at the end and you need to, to continue with your process. Así que para aquellos que no lograron completar sus actividades, eh, traten de hacerlo, ya que eh, estamos a punto de finalizar, solo nos falta, ¿verdad? Una sección después de esta, I mean, una sesión después de esta, y eh, vamos a completar la eh, información que tenemos en el curso. Así que si ustedes no han logrado terminar, traten de hacerlo eh, lo más pronto posible para que no se vayan a quedar sin su certificado, ¿verdad? De que participaron en este módulo y les vaya a afectar luego para um, los demás módulos que van a tener, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos que este no es el final, sino que hay que seguir con otros procesos para llegar hasta los últimos. So, good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, good night, good night to the others that are coming right now. So, we are going to begin with the, the information that we have for today. Um, we're going to talk about past. So in this case, we are going to uh, see what are the difference between the four uh, main um, tenses that we have in past. Uh, we are going to see some examples, the uses, and we are going to have some activities. In this case, we are going to have um, an activity in which you are going to have like a couple of minutes to see something very funny because we are going to watch a short video and um, we're going to see some uh, something very uh, 
hilarious because we are going to see a situation that is kind of, um, I don't know, it's something comical. So in that case, you are going to have like a rest time watching this video. And then we're going to make like a discussion about the video. And also we are going to complete some statements related to that video that we are going to eh, see in a couple of minutes. Vamos a ver un pequeño video, ¿verdad? Um, que es bastante cómico, es bastante divertido y vamos a tener como ese momento de diversión con ese video. Es como um, making a pause in the process that we are doing right now. Um, when we were like talking about the different tenses, uh, in this case, we were talking about the present tense. And when we were like talking about the um, the present tense, we were saying that this one is the the best tense to begin teaching about the English language, and also it is the best one to begin with this process. Cuando hablábamos del presente, hablábamos. Um, que es como el simple present, es como uno de los preferidos a la hora de enseñar o aprender inglés. ¿Por qué? Porque decíamos que aprendemos sobre los pronombres, aprendemos sobre los verbos, aprendemos sobre las estructuras, aprendemos muchas cosas nuevas. Ahora, con el caso del past, in this case is the simple past, that is the number one that we are going to see right now, um, is one of the most used tenses in English because uh, when we are telling some stories, when we are um, talking with someone, we use this tense. And also, it is one of the most used because you, um, in this case, now how to differentiate or make the difference between the regular and irregular verbs. But how is this thing possible? ¿Cómo podemos nosotros hacer la diferencia entre los verbos regulares e irregulares? Solo utilizando un tiempo, ¿verdad? De, del pasado. Bueno, en este caso, como estamos hablando del pasado, de los tiempos pasados, vamos a hablar de algo que sucedió ya sea ayer, hace un año, hace dos años, hace tres años. Nosotros necesitamos, ¿verdad? Crear esa... Um, ese ambiente en el que la persona que nos escuche se meta también a ese papel, ¿verdad? Que, que entienda en qué momento de la historia, en qué momento de la vida sucedió esta acción. Entonces, para hacer eso, para envolver a la persona en, eh, en esta narrativa, en, en esta parte en la que nosotros queremos contar con lujo de detalles, cómo sucedieron las cosas, pues vamos a utilizar qué tiempo. In this case, the simple past. Porque así vamos a determinar, ¿verdad? Uh, y le vamos a decir a la persona, es que eso me sucedió ayer, hace un año, hace dos años. And it was like something that I cannot uh, forget because uh, it's like something, I don't know, traumatic, uh, funny, uh, a lot of things. Así que eh, para ese caso, ¿verdad? Para contar lo que son ciertas cosas o historias o partes de nuestra vida, vamos a utilizar lo que es el past tense. But it is not just to talk about the, the actions, activities, things that we did in the past. We are going to see eh, what are the other, the other uses that we can give to these eh, tense. So... The first thing that we are going to do is to see the document. So we are going to begin with the document in which we are going to write all the information that we need to know about these different tenses. We're going to make, um, it is not a difference. We are going to uh, understand. In this case, I'm going to make it easier for you. Vamos a tratar de hacerlo más fácil para entender qué elementos vamos a utilizar para este tiempo, para este tense. Vamos a hacer lo mismo que hicimos con el presente, 
en el cual nosotros estábamos eh, poniendo cuatro ejemplos en los cuales utilizábamos eh, los elementos para cada uno de los tiempos. ¿Qué elementos utilizamos? Para el simple present, el present continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous. We are going to do the same thing, but with past. And we are going to make like the contrast of the information. Vamos a ver las eh, oraciones en pasado, pero con los cuatro eh, tiempos que vamos a ver y los vamos a colocar junto a las oraciones que ya teníamos del presente para que veamos, ¿verdad? Cómo están construidos cada uno de ellos. So, the topic is the past tenses. Okay, in this case, we are going to see the forms. Aquí vamos a ver los cuatro ejemplos. Okay, number one, simple past. Y tenemos esta estructura o este fragmento de lo que es el pasado. I play. Next one. We have past continuous. And we have the following structure. I was playing. I was playing. Next one. Past perfect. And we have this one, I had lay. And the last one, that is the past perfect continuous. And we have this element or this fragment to complete this one. And it says, I had been playing. Okay, in this case, we have these elements and we need to, to make like a, a contrast of the information that we have in the present. Eh, para hacerlo mucho más fácil, para entenderlo mejor, vamos a poner estos fragmentos junto a los fragmentos que ya tenemos en el presente. So we are going to see the phrases that we have at the beginning of this topic. Uh, let me see if we have these ones, aquí. Aquí tenemos nuestras oraciones que son las que ya vimos con el tiempo presente. Ahora, ¿qué vamos a hacer para ver eh, las diferencias entre el presente y el pasado? Well, I'm going to write the same structure here. So, in present, I have, I play basketball. In past, I'm going to change a little bit that structure. Si yo ya tengo, I play basketball in present. En pasado, ¿qué voy a hacer yo? Bueno, voy a cambiar mi verbo. Porque aquí yo no estoy utilizando eh, auxiliares. Estoy utilizando los verbos como tal. Entonces, ¿cómo quedaría? I Played basketball. I played basketball. Y lo único que cambié es agregarle una ed a mi verbo. And that's it. Ahora, para el continuo. En presente de yo tengo, I am playing basketball. Ahora, the same thing. I, pero en el caso del verbo to be. Como este es mi auxiliar para decirme que yo estoy en pasado, ¿qué le va a pasar a ese am? Shame for what? Oh, very good. We are going to change that verb to be. And we are going to write was. 
Aquí yo lo voy a cambiar simplemente al pasado. I was y lo demás sigue siendo igual que la estructura que yo estoy utilizando. Playing basketball. Ok, like this. Ahora, continuamos con esta. Present perfect. I need to do it past perfect. Tengo que hacerlo pasado. Ahora, the same thing. I, pero tengo el auxiliar have. Para que mi oración esté en pasado, ¿qué tengo que hacer con ese auxiliar? Had. Exactamente. I had. Y mi verbo va a seguir igual. Sí, por supuesto, porque esa es la estructura, ¿verdad? I have played basketball. And we have the last one. Again, I, vamos a volver a repetir, had been playing basketball. Muy bien, ahí tenemos la estructura en la cual nosotros pues podemos ver, ¿verdad? Las diferencias y las similitudes entre ellos. Estamos utilizando estructuras que en realidad no es que sean tan complejas o tan diferentes. Tienen casi los mismos elementos, solo que tenemos que saber cómo cambiar esos elementos de un tiempo al otro. Así que aquí tenemos... Eh, Básicamente la misma estructura, solo el verbo o el auxiliar es el que cambia. So in this case, it's kind of simple. And we are going to do it more um, simpler uh, in the information that I have for you about the past and the different uh, structures of the past that we have in this topic. So we are going to see the same uh, sentences, que son estas. Solo que aquí no le agregamos lo del básquetbol, pero son lo mismo. Vamos a empezar a ver lo que son los usos del de pasado simple. That is the, the number one. The simple past. And we have uses. And it says that the main use that we have for the past simple is for finished actions in the past. Vamos a hablar como tema principal del pasado simple de las acciones que ya finalizaron. En este caso solo estoy hablando de acciones que ya finalizaron. ¿En qué momento? In the past. Si la acción ya terminó en el pasado, that is my, um, my thing. Uh, but if the action is still going, I'm not going to use this structure because I need a, something or some actions that ended in a time in the past. So in this case, I need to be very careful with this. I'm going to tell something. I'm going to like tell a story. I need to see if the actions or the verbs that I am using are in the correct time. So. The main use. Este es el, el, el uso eh, como más importante, ¿verdad? De el simple eh, past. So, in this case, it says, the main use of the past In the past, we're going to see some examples. Okay, example number one. I was born in San Salvador. I was born in San Salvador. Number two. I clean my house. And number three, 
I forgot my cell phone. Yesterday. Ok, aquí tenemos acciones que ya terminaron en el pasado. En este caso, pues estamos hablando de cosas que tal vez solo pasaron una vez y que ya no pueden volver a pasar. O okay. que, eh, bueno, vamos a tratar de que no vuelvan a pasar. I was born, nací. Pues es una sola vez, ¿no? Físicamente, espiritualmente, pues pueden ser muchas. Pero físicamente, pues solo una, ¿no? I clean my house, limpié mi casa. Pero ahora yo ya terminé esa acción y sigo con otra cosa. And the next one, I forgot my cell phone yesterday. Olvidé mi teléfono ayer. Esta acción ya terminó. We can use it with a finished time phrase like the ones that we are going to see. Vamos a utilizarlo también con eh, time phrases. Frases que pueden, um, o frases que hablan de tiempos en específicos. So we are going to omit this one. So we have the examples. Number one, yesterday, I went to the supermarket. Number two, last night, we watch a movie. And number three, the phone ran five minutes ago. Okay, so in this case, when we're talking about the time phrases, uh, we are talking about words that um, let me understand the time in which I am performing an action. Son frases que me van a dar la pauta a mí para explicar um, en qué momento en específico yo realicé esta acción. ¿Cómo así? Bueno, en este caso nosotros tenemos los siguientes ejemplos. Yesterday, that is one of these uh, examples. Yesterday, then we have last night. And uh, in this one, five minutes ago. Esas eh, palabras o frases que tenemos aquí no se están especificando a nosotros en qué momento sucedió la acción. Yesterday I went to the supermarket. Fui al supermercado. Ahora, si yo solo digo la frase I went to the supermarket, yo no estoy especificando en qué momento yo fui al supermercado. Pero si yo le agrego la time phrase o la time word or this kind of word that is specified in which time, I add something extra. Yesterday, okay. tell me. Sorry. Tell uh, me. It's the same with this, with the, the sentence that say, I forgot my cell phone phone yesterday. No, um, it's the same to, to, to write, I forgot my cell phone, that's it. Or it's necessary to, to write the word yesterday in the sentence. Okay, in the first one, it is not necessary to add the word yesterday. 
Um, I add the word because we were specifying in which time that in this case it's just to like notice that the action was performed in the past. But if you, in this case, maybe you don't want to say it in which time, that is not necessary in the first case. In the second oh, one, yes, because you are telling that um, you did something in a specific time. But no. in, mm -hmm, in the first one, it's not like something very necessary. In the second mm -hmm. one, yes. But also, uh, we can use these kind of expressions to um, make people understand that the actions are completed in the past. But it's not like we are going to use all the time these kind of uh, phrases. But we can do it in both ways, with and without the time phrases. Okay, thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So in this case, we have these examples, but I have more words for you. In this case, other common time expressions uh, that you can use are the following. So in this case, we have the following words. We have last month, last week, last summer, in 1997, when I was a child, A long time ago, on Monday, in February, at Sala. Ok, son frases que nos especifican el tiempo. Aquí podemos utilizar cualquier frase pero que nos hable de tiempo, ¿verdad? Ayer, eh, por la mañana, hace dos días, eh, hace una semana, eh, 1950, whatever phrase that is specified the time in which an action was performed. Now, we can also use the past simple for the main action when telling a story. Cuando contamos una historia, vamos a utilizar el pasado simple para contarla, ¿verdad? Para decir cómo sucedieron las cosas. En, en este caso, I'm just going to read the example because uh, we are going to have a lot of time writing this uh, example. So it says, I woke up on my wedding day. I jumped out of the bed immediately called my brother. He didn't pick up, and so I began to worry. Me levanté eh, en mi día, en el día de mi matrimonio, en el día de mi casamiento, en el día de mi boda. Salté de la cama, inmediatamente le llamé a mi hermano. Él no contestó y me empecé a preocupar. So, we are going to see the video that I was talking to you um, at the beginning. And this is a video about Mr. Bean, or Mr. Bean, that is the name of this uh, character, that is someone uh, very uh, clumsy and very funny. Vamos a ver un pequeño video de Mr. Bean. Pero en este caso yo se lo voy a mandar directamente al grupo because we cannot share this, um, this kind of videos on the screen right now. This one. I send the video to you. And this video is called Cooking a Spaghetti. So we are going to see the video. 
we are going to pay attention to the action that are happening there. In this case, we are not going to have a, a conversation. No tenemos una conversación en el video. Pero vamos a utilizar nuestro conocimiento sobre los verbos en pasado. Pero en este caso, I need you to see the video to pay attention to the actions. And then we are going to talk about the things that we can see on the video. So, we have five minutes to complete this one. The, the video is like three minutes. And then we are going to talk about the things that we see in the video. So, let's begin watching the video uh, because it is in, on YouTube and you can uh, watch the video. So, let's go. We have five minutes.
chaotic one. Um, a lot of things happen on that video. And if you can see, there are a lot of actions there that we can explain. So what is the most like funny thing or le the thing that uh, called your attention more in the video? ¿Cuál es la cosa que más le llamó la atención del video de Mr. Bean? Okay, in this case, we have different things happening there in which we have a person that is having maybe a first date with someone and this person wants everything go perfect, but they are like, they are not happening like this person is thinking because you can see that he wants to cook something for uh, that girl, but at the same time, he didn't have anything um, in the kitchen to make like a very romantic uh, dinner. He just have uh, some spaghetti. And he thought that uh, was a very brilliant idea to cook those as spaghetti. If you can see also, they are kind of hard. So in that case, you, you can um, see they are not very new. So they they are not very good. So in that case, he's feeling kind of anxious uh, because uh, he wants to cook something and the girl is waiting and the spaghetti are not um don't worry don't worry with your camera um uh, but he's like not be on time if he's cooking the spaghetti on the kitchen and also he ha he had this brilliant idea in which he needs to uh, have boiling water on the bathroom and begins uh, happening a lot of things and the girl is even eating the flowers because she is very hungry now after the video we have these phrases these ones we have these phrases mr bean and also we have some verbs that we need to transform into past we have brush his teeth, try to cook a spaghetti in the pot, um, put this the spaghetti in the bag, uh, kill the bird, and take the spaghetti out of the cardboard. Now we are going to transform those verbs into past. Vamos a transformar esos verbos en pasado. With the number one, brushed. ¿Cómo quedaría el verbo brushed en pasado? Brushed. With ED. Brushes. Okay. In this case, brush. Like this. Brush his teeth. Now, try. In past, tried, tried, okay, tried to cook a spaghetti uh, in the pot. Put in past, put the same thing put. with this one. Kill in past, healed, kill very good. And the last one, take to cook. cook. Okay, very good. Like this. So in this case, 
we have this kind of um, verbs in past and in this case we have regular and irregular verbs so that is very important that we um, understand the difference between these ones so we are going to continue because we have this um, example or this exercise um, and we are going to continue with the next one. And the next one is the past continuous. But give me a second. part of this topic. We're going to see the past continuous. Also, in this case, we are going to see the form and the uses of this part of the past. So in the form, We form it using was and where plus the verb plus ing. So what are the uses? In this case, we are going to have like a, a couple of uses and also we are going to um, we're going to have some examples about the uses that we have in continuous. Like in the Simple past, we have a, a common use of this structure or the most used a form that we have in this structure. But in this case, it says that a common use of the past continuous is to show that a longer action was interrupted usually by a shorter action in the past simple. Aquí vamos a tener una unión de dos cosas. Una es que vamos a tener nuestra acción en pasado continuo, pero esa acción que lleva más tiempo pasando o sucediendo va a ser interrumpida por una acción más corta, con menos tiempo, pero que esté en pasado eh, simple. O sea que vamos a utilizar los, los dos. Uno interrumpe al otro. Hi, coach. Good Hello. night, coach. Hello, good night. Sorry, I'm the time, coach. Don't worry. Okay, so in this case, we're, we're saying that a longer action is being interrupted by a shorter action. Let's see the examples. We have number one. 
And it says, I was swimming. I was swimming in the sea. When I saw a shark. When I saw a shark. Estaba nadando en el mar cuando vi un tiburón. So in this case, the longer action is the one with the ing form. And the shorter one is the part in which we are using the simple past. And also, when we are using this kind of expressions or when we are using this kind of a structures we are going to use the word when cuando utilicemos esta eh, estas características o estas formas en las cuales una acción más corta eh, interrumpe a una más larga vamos a utilizar when así como lo vemos en la oración I was swimming in the sea esa es la parte más larga verdad la acción más larga when, ahí es donde yo determino que hay una oración más corta que está interrumpiendo mi acción. When I saw a shark. Y esa parte o esa acción que interrumpe mi acción principal va a ir escrita en pasado simple. Number two. Henry was sitting at home when the phone rang. Again, Henry was sitting at home. My longer action, when the phone rang, my shorter action that is interrupting Henry from sitting on the couch, sitting on a chair, sitting on the bed, sitting on the floor. I don't know, but he was sitting somewhere. But the phone rang and he was like, I need to stand up and pick up the phone. Number three, she was playing golf when it began to rain. So we have our longer action. She was playing golf when it began to rain. Then we have another use for this present, con I mean, past continuous. When we have two continuous uh, actions, we are going to use the time expression while. Cuando en nuestra oración, en nuestra conversación, en lo que estamos utilizando, lo que estamos diciendo, hayan dos eh, acciones continuas, o sea, dos acciones que van con ING, Vamos a utilizar while para separarlas. Para que no haya como un eh, contraste o una, eh, o vayamos a redundar con el uso, ¿verdad? De los continuos. The meaning of while is... Um, Mientras. Eso. Mm -hmm. Exactamente. <laughs> Don't worry. When to continues... So we have the examples.
In this case, we have number one. It says, I was talking to Sarah while she was driving. I was talking to Sarah while she was driving. And the second one, we were playing while dad was cooking dinner. Ok, cuando vamos a incluir, ¿verdad? Estos dos... Eh, estas dos formas, ¿verdad? Continuas de eh, los verbos, vamos a utilizar while para separarlos, para que no ten, o sea, no suene tan pesado, ¿verdad? A la hora de eh, decirlo. En el caso de la primera, I was talking to Sarah, esto, estaba hablando con Sara, while, mientras Sara was driving, o mientras ella estaba manejando. Y en la segunda, we were playing, estuvimos o estábamos jugando while dad was cooking dinner, mientras papá cocinaba la cena. So in that case, in which we are going to use the two uh, continuous verbs, we are going to add a while in the middle of those actions. Now, we are going to see um, two uses more to complete this part. So, tomorrow we are going to end with past perfect and past perfect continuous. And remember that tomorrow is the last day, so we are going to work tomorrow because uh, we didn't have the session yesterday. Así que recuerden que por no haber tenido la sesión de ayer, vamos a tener la última sesión el día de mañana. Así que mañana se termina, ¿verdad? Este módulo. And we are free. So we are going to, like, fight a little bit today and then we are sí. going to end tomorrow. ¿Mm? ¿Por qué, coach? Estoy anotando clases. <laughs> It's just one month. It's just one pues month. Tú. Ah, Pero it's not extrañar, my fault. Extrañar, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to miss you too, but it is things of the life. Don't worry. We are going to continue with the process. <laughs> okay, two more. Next one. We can also use it to show a continuous action happening at a specific time in the past. Vamos a utilizar también esa estructura para mostrar una acción en esta estructura, ¿verdad? En el continuo, que sucede a una hora específica o un tiempo específico en el pasado. And we are going to see two different examples. And it says, at six o'clock,
at six o'clock, I was eating dinner. Number two, what were you doing at 8 p.m. last night? What were you doing at 8 p.m. last night? And number three, yesterday morning, I was practicing the piano. And the last one, this is the last use that we are going to give to this structure. And it's almost um, the same with the a simple past in which we are like telling a story. But in the first one, we are like adding description of the place or the things that we did. And in this one is also to add a description to the story. But it is not like in simple past. In this case, it's in past eh, in continuous. Es para agregar siempre descripciones, ¿verdad? Extra a las historias que estamos contando. El anterior era con el pasado eh, simple, ahora es con el pasado continuo. Yes, practicing. But we have two forms to write practicing. Uh, we have one with S and we have one with C. But in this case, the one with S is from UK. If I am not wrong, in this case, like this, is um, Es inglés británico, por eso se escribe con S, pero en el caso del inglés de Estados Unidos es con C, practicing with C. So, in this case, the last one, because we have just two minutes to end. Uh -huh. It can be used to add more, uh, some description to a story. In the first one, when we were talking about the simple past, we were talking about uh, someone that uh, was on the wedding day. In this case, we are going to talk about a, a beautiful day in the example. It was a beautiful day. And from this idea, we are going to add more information. In this case, to add a description. And it says the sun was shining. And the birds were singing. And the last part, we were walking around our favorite park. We were walking around our favorite park. Okay, that's 
Uh, those are the uh, uses that we can give to these two tenses of the past. So tomorrow we are going to end with the past perfect and past perfect continuous. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the last session. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.